it is a complex relationship. Uh, um, machine learning, it's a very new technology and copyright law, it's a, a, a very old law in the sense that, uh, as it is often said, it is a law that has been developed uh, mainly uh, in function of uh, a very different type of technology. Let's think of printing press. Naturally, over the years and the centuries, it has adapted to new technologies. Um, from photographs uh, to radio broadcasting to then, you know, more recently software and databases. But every time a new technology appears, there is a moment in which this uh, adjustment is, uh, is necessary. And during this time, of course, various uh, interests, various dynamics uh, uh, are, are at play. Uh, with the case of machine learning, this is, uh, again, the, the, the overall dy dynamic is not entirely new. But naturally, there are different needs. Uh, my main preoccupation uh, when working on my paper is that uh, from our case study, what emerges uh, is that the two main, uh, um, let's say, stakeholders or, or interests that have been reflected into the legislative process, but also in, to, in the public discourse, are those of uh, right holders on the one hand and those of uh, developers of AI tools on the other hand. And naturally, both are very important uh, um, interests and very important groups. But there is a third one uh, who is uh, naturally underrepresented in this equation, which is that of users, uh, of citizens, of, uh, of people like us, uh, who somehow get, uh, get lost in this uh, uh, you know, uh, equation based on only two players. So in, in my work, I try to identify the elements uh, already existing in uh, copyright uh, laws uh, nationally at the EU level and internationally uh, that can already be used to uh, uh, rebalance uh, this equilibrium. Because copyright has always been about the balance between uh, authors uh, uh, and, and the public, between the need to incentivize uh, cultural creation and the need to uh, for, for the public to have access uh, to it, because you know, uh, what's uh, how can be important to incentivize the creation of new knowledge if no one is able to achieve it, to have uh, to read it, to 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 experience it. So this balancing exercise uh, is uh, present also in the field of machine learning, and uh, the example that you give about uh, uh, training data is um, summarize uh, most of the debate that we are observing at the moment. Um, do machine need to obtain a permission or the, the operators of machine, of course, uh, in order to uh, to be able to be trained on this uh, on this data? And if yes, under which conditions? So I think this is the core of the question and uh, and uh, the core of the analysis that we have developed in our paper.